In your life as a game dev, it is inevitable that you will need to make a game that requires animation. Well, I suppose you could make something, but it wouldn't be very interesting. It could be attacking, blocking, shooting, or even picking something up. Either way, it's a valuable skill to have. In Unity, I found that 2D animation with tile sheets is probably the most basic and easy to learn animation while still giving you a good understanding of what the animator is capable of. So in this video, I'm going to teach you what a tile sheet is, how to set one up, and help you create your first animations in Unity. Let's get into it. So here I've got a blank Unity 2D project. The first thing we're going to be doing is creating a folder and we're just going to name that Tile Sheets. Now simply, Tile Sheets are really just a collection of images that go in order and form an animation. So they're different frames within an animation. And that is exemplified here by my amazing chicken sprite sheet. <laughs> so this chicken sprite sheet if I zoom in on it a bit, you can just double click it inside of Unity. It will open it up inside of Paint or any other viewing tool. And you can see here that from left to right, I have a list of images that form actions. So the top row is one action. It's clearly the chicken walking. The, then we have the chicken crouching. Then we have the chicken nesting, I suppose. <laughs> and again, we have another chicken walking. A slightly different animation for that one. So we're going to be using this to create an animation, which will basically just be looping over from frame to frame the different actions that it's going to do. In order to do that, we need to tell Unity what we actually have, because right now Unity thinks of this as one single image. If I were to drag this into my game, it would just say, cool, you have this weird image for some reason. But we need it to know that each chicken here should be its own individual image. So the way that we do that is we go into the setup in our inspector for this image that we have. We're fine with this being uh, 2D and UI, but the things that we want to change is the sprite mode we're going to be setting to multiple. So that says we're not just dealing with one image here, we're actually dealing with multiple of them. And in order to actually use this, I'm just going to click apply quickly, uh, we need to go into the sprite editor. So this sprite editor here allows you to slice up an image into multiple images, which Unity can then treat as separate images. Now the easiest way to do this is to go into slice, set this to automatic and just hit slice. Now, if you have some basic images like this one, it actually works quite well. You can see it automatically determines the boundaries that it's going to apply to things. And each of these boxes are gonna end up being a separate image inside of Unity. But for the sake of this video, you can go to grid by cell size. And this is a way that you can basically split up your image based on the X and Y sizings of the image. Now, if you're trying to work this out, it's actually not that complex. You can just open up your image here and you can see that this is 128 by 128. So 128 divided by four is 32 if you're a nerd like me. So jumping back into the game, I can slice this and go 32 by 32. And that will give me a perfect grid of separate images that I can work with. Now, in this case, I do want this because the thing I wanted to avoid was having an image that is slightly smaller on one of them. Just for simplicity's sake, it's nice and easy to have everything the exact same size so I don't have to worry about things moving around when I change between frames. So apply this, and then I need to click apply up here. So what has this actually done? Well, you can see here that my sprite sheet now, instead of being this one giant thing, is actually a single chicken and I can drag on each image and they're separate chickens now, which is great. We've got a whole bunch of chickens that we can work with, but that obviously doesn't form an animation just yet. There's one more piece that I wanna do that is very important if you're actually looking at producing a game from this. When you import images into your project, let's say I import this here and it defaults to a max size of 2048. Now this is actually quite a large image that it's gonna inflate it to. When you pack up your game, especially if you're making something on mobile, this can be quite impactful on performance if you're using a file size that's far larger than what it needs to be. Because these images came from a 128 by 128 file, if I drop this down to 128, you'll see here that there's actually no difference in the file quality, on the image quality, should I say? when I click apply. But if I were to drop this down to, let's say 64, you can see it starts to blur a bit and then 32, it gets even worse. But I can just drop that back up to 128 and you can see there's just no difference between 128 
and 240, uh, 248. So I would really recommend where possible, reduce the size of your images when you import them. It just makes life so much simpler. And if you're doing, if you're importing a giant asset pack, note that all of those assets are, when you import them are going to be a max size of 2048. So you're going to be dealing with what is probably pretty unnecessarily large files, uh, for your build project. There's actually a tab in here called a profiler that helps you work out the amount of CPU usage, rendering, and memory that gets allocated when trying to do each of these tasks. I might do a, a separate video on that because this tool is very complex, but it's very, very powerful when you're trying to debug performance. Okay, so now I have my chicken in my scene, and if I hit play, he is just going to be standing there in a blue background, not really doing anything too interesting. What we're going to want to have happen eventually is we're going to want him to be looping through these images and basically changing his his stance and if we loop through them fast enough it'll look like he's animated and that's really all that we're looking to do with this project so in my animation tab here and if you don't have this just go right click add tab animation or i think it's also inside of window panels animation and it can add it in there i've also got animator up here but we'll get into that one a little bit later now the easiest way to do this is if you click on the chicken sprite, which I'm going to rename main chicken because he is my main chicken. And then with him, with this game object clicked, I'm going to click create and it's called new animation. So we're just going to call this one. Maybe let's make this chicken walk and we might call it chicken walk left because the first one will just be easy to do that way. Click save. And we can see here it's created a animator controller as well as an animation. And on our chicken, it's attached that animator along with the animator controller of the main chicken to it. Some other things have changed here now. I can see that my chicken walk left animation, this animation here is now a default animation when I click on this game object. If I were to click off, I wouldn't have any. Click back on and this is now, an, it's an attached animation to this object. Finally, the last thing to look at here is the animator. Now we'll get into this one a little bit later, but you can see here that it's created this little space here, which says that on entry, which is basically happens when the game starts, it's going to travel straight over to this animation chicken walk left. Because right now there's nothing in the animation, if I would hit play on the game, nothing's gonna happen. It'll just be the same chicken doing nothing, but in the animator, he'll be saying, hey, I'm currently walking left, even though that's not a thing. Let's get him animating, let's get him walking. What we're gonna do is we're going to be using this little record feature here, and we're going to be, <clears throat> what this will do is it will track every change that is made to this game object. Um, either, you know, X position or Y position or anything in the transform, the sprite renderer, the animator, all will be recorded at the time frame that the, that the cursor is currently at. So really all that we're doing to animate is we're gonna be changing this sprite, just like I was dragging and dropping it in before, but we want that to be happening at different times. I'm fine with him starting on animation zero, but let's say at 0.15 seconds, I would like him to change over to his first animation. Now you can see it creates these little keyframes here, and that's basically just showing that there's a change in animation at that point in time. We're gonna to go to the next one. Let's put it at 0.3, drag the next animation in. Oh, I'm going to animation two, not three, oops. Two, and then 0.45, we will go to animation three. And now let's just flick back to our chicken sprite. And we can see that we had four animations. So we had one, two, three, and four. This has become zero, that's our start starting one. This has become one, two, three. So we're gonna to need to add one more called four. So I'm just gonna hit record again to get back to that recording. And then at one second, click on our chicken, drag in frame four. Stop the record. And now if I hit play on this, we've got a chicken and he walks. I realize this is an idle animation now. <laughs> So, we can fix that up real quick. My mistake. This is a chicken idle animation. <clears throat> so we just rename it. It'll rename it here. Nice and simple. 
The other thing to note in here in this chicken animation is that it has a loop time. So when you're in game and you're playing, if this is ticked, the animation will just keep repeating itself, which is ideal for idle animations because when you're standing there, you want him to constantly be doing it. But if I had unticked this, then he would run through the animation once and then he would just return to his first frame and then stop any any further animation. That's ideal for things like sword slashes or so, uh, you know, an, an attack animation, for example. You don't want it to constantly be repeating the same attack animation. You want him to complete one attack animation and then move out to the next, uh, revert to a different frame. So if I hit play now, we'll see that my chicken starts running through his animations and is idling. Congratulations, we've just animated our first character, that's great. That's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be running through having multiple animations for this chicken, as well as transitioning between those animations. And we'll be able to control our character and swap animations based on what we're pressing at the time. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, maybe a comment, let me know what you want to see this chicken do in future videos, and we'll see if we can make it happen. See you next week, guys.